All right, guys, I'm super excited. Today's the day. NBA Jam just came out. It's the first Arcade 1-Up online game. I'm going to bring three of my closest friends, and we're going to play. All right, let's bring the first one on. Hi, Maya. Hey, man. Mm -hmm. Hey, thanks for joining. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, good to see you. All right, Maya. let's bring the second one on. Yeah, Maya. Mm. Uh, okay. Yeah, Maya. All right, cool. All right, let's bring on number three. Yeah, Maya. Hey, Ralph. What's up? It's uh, Ralph. Do I know you? Yeah, my. Anyway. Cowboy. <sighs> Who am I kidding? All right, guys, here it is, the Arcade 1-Up NBA Jam cabinet. It's finally here. I feel like we've been here before, though. That's cool, but there's one game you gave us a taste of. You said, hey, look into the trailer. We got something special. I'm going to take a little picture so you can see a little sliver of it, but, 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 but we, we're not going to get it. We're, we're, you're not going to give it to us. Why? Why? Metro Ralph will give it to you. Metro Ralph wants to give it to you. So in this episode, Boom shakalaka! Let's do it! Okay, okay, okay. Well, well, now it's officially here. But anyways, so the reason why this excites me is for a couple of reasons, but one of the main reasons is this may be one that's not as obvious, is they partnered with a company called Code Mystics. And you're probably like, well, who the heck is Code Mystics? Well, they did the emulation for this game and another game you may, you know, be familiar with, which is Star Wars. This cabinet just feels different, and so did the Star Wars. It felt higher quality. It seemed like the emulation was dead on. And that's because Code Mystic's whole charter is to recreate these games with as close to 100% accuracy as possible. Now, down to little details, they even rebuilt menu systems for this particular game that would expose the original dip switches from the arcade. So obviously this isn't a, you know, an arcade board, so I can't go in and flip the dip switches, but they actually exposed the dip switches and then wrote a user interface that goes on top of it. They also took a ROM that's over 20 years old, right? This game is over 20 years old, and they actually built Wi-Fi into it. Like these aren't little things, these are really big things and they actually really preserve uh, what I would call retro gaming. I mean, it preserves retro gaming by taking something and making it even better. Now, there's some limits, right? There's some things that people aren't going to like about the cabinet. Um, you know, the player roster isn't 100%, but it's pretty damn close. And they did a pretty good job considering uh, the NBA Retired Players Association and all the things you have to deal with that. So props to them for getting as much as possible. So let's go through a couple of little things about the cabinet physically before we dive a step deeper. So as you can see, it's got the light up deck protector. Now there's a lot of confusion around this because there's several bundles. You know, I purchased the GameStop bundle, which comes with the stool I'm sitting on, as well as the light up deck protector, the system and the riser. Now there is an offering from Walmart that doesn't come with that, but keep in mind, it, it's lacking the stool and the light-up deck protector. So a lot of people are saying it's $100 you're paying for an LED strip. That's not really accurate because the stools themselves retail for $80. So you're technically getting an LED strip for an extra $20. And if you don't want the stool, then buy the Walmart bundle. So that's what I have to say about that. Now, the light-up deck protector is pretty interesting. And as you can see, you can cycle through various different colors. But what I found pretty fascinating is they actually reverse printed the artwork or some of the artwork on the control panel uh, um, plexiglass in order to make the light shine off of it. Now that's a pretty big deal because they actually took an extra step to do that to make the light actually reflect off the graphics. Otherwise it probably would have looked pretty flat. Now it's not for everyone but you can shut it off. So if you don't like it, 
you can shut it off. Now the monitor, as far as the monitor goes, they use the same BOE monitor we've seen in these modern machines. They're 960p displays. They're really nice and they maintain four by three aspect ratio, which is great. They still have the two speakers like we've seen on all these. So it has stereo speakers and it has a lit marquee. However, I put something a little special on it. This is by Joe Sabo, and this actually emulates the real arcade topper. So he did a really good job. As a matter of fact, I think his looks even better. And hold on for a second. I'm gonna get the real one. So we're gonna do this live. Well, we're not really live, but you know what I mean. So this is the real one. I actually own the real one because I had bought a kit that was an official NBA Jam kit meant for a full-size machine. And that's what the real one looks like right there. So it looks really nice, but obviously it's way too big to go on top of an arcade one up. So Joe Sabo recreated it and that's pretty awesome. And I'll show you, I even have it backlit. So I even have, I put a strip of LEDs behind it to make it backlit. As far as the artwork goes, the artwork, artwork looks awesome. The controls and buttons are your typical for arcade one up, at least the newer generations, their Sanwa clone joysticks and their Sanwa clone buttons. So, they're decent, you know, I think they're gonna be fine and do the job for what it is. Now, a couple of people have talked about the power switch being different. Now, why is the power switch different? It's different because this particular system, again, done by Code Mystics, it has more of a sophisticated operating environment. So it does need to go through a graceful shutdown. So that's why you have that type of switch. So if you have something like smart devices in your house or things like Alexa switches and stuff, you're gonna have a problem, but I would highly advise not modifying that because the system does need to go through a shutdown process. All right, guys, so when you boot up the system, you are greeted with the game selection menu. You've got NBA Jam, NBA Jam Tournament Edition, and NBA Jam Hang Time. Now you'll notice there's a little gear icon on the left. If you go to that, you'll notice a menu pops up. Now the reason why this menu is so significant is because this is actually part of the real arcade boards game adjustments menu, which is really cool. So this was actually settings that you could go into in service mode of NBA Jam, NBA Jam Tournament Edition, and Hang Time to set specific settings like computer assistance, attract mode, head sizes, normal or big, drone difficulty, which is, you know, how difficult the computer is gonna be, and then the game timer speed as well as scan line. So this is something that Code Mystics has put in here. This is really cool because it starts to emulate the original look and feel of NBA Jam on a CRT. Now this is also, this is available on all of the games on this cabinet, which is really cool. So I'm gonna hit hide menu really quick and go on to the next one. You'll notice in tournament edition, these game adjustment screens are pretty much the same, except you have tournament mode enabled and disabled. So many people ask, what is tournament mode? When the system's in tournament mode, CPU assistance is turned off and no power-ups or special guests are allowed. So there's no cheating of any kind. I've got a couple questions about if NBA Jam Tournament Edition contains some of the special characters. So I'm going to hit that. Now these are accessible via your initials and date of birth. So I'm going to do that really quick. So we're going to go in and try the Ed Boon one. So that's going to be E J B and it's going to be 222. So February 22nd. And if you look, Ed Boon is there. So I tested Ed Boon and I tested um, John Tobias and both of those work. So I'm not saying that all of these are going to work, but it looks like in N NBA Jam Tournament Edition, uh, Ed Boon and John Tobias work. So for what that's worth, you can kind of have fun with it and try it yourself. But I thought that was kind of cool and thought it was kind of worth bringing up. Now I know your next question is going to be, what about the Mortal Kombat characters? So let's see. So we're going to go S U B. And I believe it's December 5th. So we're gonna go December 5th. Sadly, you're not gonna be able to play Scorpion, Raiden, Sub-Zero, or Reptile. I'm sorry, but I think this isn't the version of the ROM that supported that. I think they stopped supporting that at some point. So they did not put those on here. Now maybe they'll make them unlockable in the future because you can do, uh, this is a, a you know, connected arcade, so maybe they'll do a patch for that later, but it doesn't look like you have them for now. Toasty. All right, let's talk a little bit about the live settings. So when you hit the live button, you're gonna be greeted with this menu. So the basic stuff is you're gonna to have to set up your network first. So you connect it to your wireless network. So you're gonna to need to do that. It's pretty basic and, and straightforward. You're gonna to need to supply an email address and a public name. Yes, my public name is Retro Ralph, so you can log on and kick my ass because I really do suck at NBA Jam. 
Um, then you got social options, which mean your availability. Now this is important because you may want to be invisible. You may want to be visible. Now you can choose visible to only your favorites. So let's say you have a bunch of friends in your favorites list. That's probably the one I'll be using when a couple more of my friends actually get the cabinet. But for right now, I'm just going to say I'm visible to everyone. Now you may not want to do that because that means anyone can join your game. Well, that's what you can select right here. So you can say no one can join your game, only your favorites can join your game or anyone. Now keep in mind, if you select anyone, you could be in middle of the game and someone can join your game. Do you want to post your high scores to the leaderboard? Yes or no. And then um, who can see those? So you can say everybody, that's fine. And then um, you know, change the order that you want your games to appear for available games. You can have your favorites list, so your friends first or whoever's there, so newest first. Recently played, it'll show you the people that you played before. Uh, I don't have any favorites yet. And then if you have a block list, that's pretty much it. There isn't, it's not really superly overly complex or anything like that. Just figured I'd walk you through that so you can see. Now when you're back at this menu, you can see on any given game you select, there's going to be an available game section. So there's obviously more people playing NBA Jam than it looks like are playing NBA Jam Tournament Edition right now. So if I wanted to play NBA Jam, I could go there, move my joystick to the right, and then I can actually select if I want to join these games and it shows me how many free spots are available. So that's pretty cool. And you can see that I suck because I lost two games. That's awesome. But yeah, that's, it's really that simple. Now there's another place where you can change your uh, availability on the fly. So if you say, look, I really, I really would rather be invisible right now, you can do it right there. So you don't have to go and press the live button and do it there. But if you do it on the main screen, it does reflect itself here. So I'll do that again really quick. So I'll go back to availability. I'm gonna switch that to visible to everyone. Now, if I hit the live button, you'll see visible to everyone. So it's just a more convenient way to do it without having to hit the live button and go through the menu. So it's pretty straightforward. And you've got this really cool leaderboard that pops up that tells you things about, you know, who's on a winning streak, um, you know, what available games are there and stuff like that. So greatest players, pretty neat. I'm, I'm pretty excited about the way they deployed this. Now, I didn't spend a lot of time on the Wi-Fi, admittedly. So I can't tell you with 100% certainty that it's the most solid, you know, solid thing ever. And I would expect a little bit of hiccups right now as they get, you know, as, as people come online and they figure out, you know, what bugs might be there. Okay, so you're probably gonna ask me, how was gameplay? I gotta admit, Code Mystics really nailed it out of the park on the emulation. I actually built an NBA Jam cabinet early on with all original hardware, and I gotta say, I don't notice a difference between how that played and how this played. So that means they did a good job. And they pride themselves on being, you know, almost 100% accurate when it comes to emulation and i really think they achieved that now as far as the online play i didn't play it enough to give you guys a valid hey it's great or you know it needs some work so i don't feel comfortable answering that right now i did have some people you know join my game and exit my game and i joined a couple games and it seemed fine but again i don't have enough practical experience with it to give you uh you know a positive or negative review on that one and i'd really like you know, one of my friends to pick it up. I'm waiting for Justin to get it so that we can play some, you know, games that way. And I think I'll probably play more that way with other friends than I will with like random people. But, uh, but yeah, so we'll kind of do a subsequent follow up on that. But I did want to share one more thing that was just my own personal curiosity before I do final thoughts. Is this the same PCB they've been using? And as a matter of fact, it's actually not. So here's the Mortal Kombat Costco bundle PCB. This is using the all winter A40i. So I don't know, I didn't remove the heatsink to see, but it's a significantly larger PCB and it actually has the Wi-Fi capability and you can see the antenna right there. Now they didn't put ethernet on it, unfortunately, but the Wi-Fi has seemed okay so far, but I just was curious. So it looks like they are using a slightly different system here. Uh, and maybe at a later date, I can take off the heatsink and we can see what's going on under there. But Pretty cool stuff. And as you saw, they're using the BOE monitor like I mentioned earlier. All right, guys, it's final thoughts time. So what do I think about the Arcade 1UP NBA Jam cabinet? I think it's really great. I think they did an awesome job with the emulation of the software. Now, I realize that the player roster may be an issue for some, and if it is, then just stay away from the cabinet. The online play, I didn't really get a chance to really fully evaluate it. So the jury's still out on that one, and I think it's still early. So hopefully I'll have a better take on that in the next couple weeks. As far as the cabinet style and everything, I think it looks great. I added that topper by Joe Sabo, which really is like the icing on the cake when it comes to aesthetics. It was in the original cabinet. Now, one thing I forgot to mention about Code Mystics. Now, you guys may actually not even realize you've used Code Mystics in the past, 
because there was the Killer Instinct Definitive Collection at, or Edition, whatever it was called, and they did that too. Now, does that mean that maybe Arcade 1UP could do Killer Instinct in the future? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm actually just playing, but I mean, it'd be really cool if they did, right? So outside of that, the deck protector, you know, I mean, it's whatever. I mean, some people like it, some people don't. I think it's actually all right, but you know, not. it's not gonna be for everyone. And if you don't like it, you can shut it off or just don't buy that bundle, buy a different bundle. Um, that's kind of it, guys. I will have links in the description to where to get an NBA Jam cabinet with the different bundles. I'll have links in the description to Joe Sabo's Topper. And there's also another third party product that you should check out. It's by Tulsa Arcades. It's actually a lit riser. I'll have a link to that with also a discount code as well. I'll be doing a review of that at a later time. So that's it, guys. I want to know, what do you think about this cabinet? Check below, put your comments, whatever. It's so late right now that I'm totally spacing out. But yeah, if you enjoyed the comment, give us a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. Turn on notifications so you can be informed of other videos like this. And that's it for now, guys. I will see you on the next one.